Okay, this is going to be a short tutorial on how to create a flapping bird animation using Spriter from Rash Monkey. I'm going to create a new project. So I already have some graphics created that I'm going to use as body parts for creating my bird. Um, I'm sharing these online if you want to use them, so feel free to do so. The weird thing in Spriter is you actually make a folder for your project and you put graphics in it before you begin. So I've already got a bird files folder with a bunch of graphics in it. And I'm going to, as you saw, I did file a new and I chose that folder. And all the graphics now that are in the folder appear here. You can go into the folder and add more graphics in even after you've created your project. So I'm going to quickly create a flappy bird. So I'm going to drag in the body. I'm going to drag in the head. And I'm going to drag in the leg twice because I want two legs. And I'm going to drag in the wing. You'll see that in this folder that I've shared that I have put plenty extra graphics so you can make a combination of of a different kind of birds using these different graphics there's a different wing there and stuff for instance if you want to a different wing if you want to do something something else and make it look a bit different I'm going to stick to the one that's in my tutorial notes I'm going to use the middle scroll button to scroll in and out here okay um, and I'm going to position the wings where I want them. Um, I want one of these wings to be behind, so I'm going to drag that down. You see that on the Z order here, so it's behind. Okay, and the same with the feet. I want one of the feet to be behind, so I'm going to do that. Drag that down, uh, and that that's kind of. I did the look for the first frame. Make sure you're on frame zero in the timeline when you're doing that. Um, I'm now going to move on to frame 100. And all I'm going to do at frame 100 is squish these wings to the middle here, like this. Okay, almost flat. So I'm going to use the square resizing no node. I think that's what it's called. And I'm going to just squish it like so. And that's all I'm going to do at that frame 100. If I play the animation now, you'll see what happens. Okay. And now we're going to go to frame 200. And I'm going to resize them down the way. Both the front and the back wing. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to move the legs slightly. So I'm going to just do this at frame 200. I'm going to move them slightly back the way and slightly up. Slightly back the way, slightly up, which will give us that effect that the legs are moving slightly as well. Just see, so double click in frame 200 on the or 200 milliseconds on the timeline. Okay, now I'm going to pull these wings down. And I'm also going to move them up slightly so that it doesn't look like they're coming apart from the body. <laughs> right. And I'm going to play that to see how that looks. Right, that's not bad. So since I've done it so quickly. Right, frame 200, do again, double click. I'm also going to nod the head of the bird a bit. So let's try that now. There we go. Okay, now, to finish the animation, instead of doing more individual keyframes, I can just copy what I've got. So I'm going to go double-click in frame 100. I'm going to edit, copy current frame, and then go to frame 300. And I'm going to edit and paste that frame. I'm also going to do the same for the initial frame. I'm going to go edit, copy current frame, go to frame 400, and do edit and paste. Okay, and we run that now. And we'll see we've got the animation playing. Now it kind of stops and starts, and that's because we've got a bunch of extra frames that we don't need, up to a thousand, which is one second. So I'm going to change this to 400 here, which is the the maximum time of the timeline or the the actual length of the timeline. And I'm going to apply length, which changes my timeline. And if I play it now, we've now got a perfect, well not perfect, but we've got a good flappy bird animation. Okay, you can change the speed of that as well by moving this down. 
Okay, if you want to look at it in more detail. Okay, that's it done. Save that project. I'm going to call it Flap, Flappy Bird. And save over the one I did previously. I'm going to export this now so that we can use it in Touch Develop. Now, what we want to take is Sprite Strip or Sprite Sheet. And we want, in my notes, you'll see that I set it to 5x4. So if you want to set it to 5 by 4 as well, 5 horizontal, 4 vertical, and make sure that the number of images is 20. If you set it for 25, for instance, you'll see that this will change to 5 by 5 But if I had 26, you see that I end up with 4 extra blank frames, which we don't want. Uh, I'm going to put it back to 20 and keep that 5 by 4 Awesome. Usually it's a good idea for these kind of game animations to turn the s output scale down as usually your animation's too big and you need to resize it anyway. So I've set the width and height to 25%, which you can adjust here. Finally export that. I'm going to call it bird animation and replace one I did earlier. And if I open up that now, you'll see that I've now got a sprite sheet which is pretty square, which is good as well for using that least amount of space. And it's got, it's tween the different stages between the keyframes to create a proper sprite strip, sprite sheet animation. Thanks for following me and I hope you can do that and enjoy. Spriter is free from Brash Monkey and you can use these animations in different programs such as Microsoft Touch Develop.